Dark Side of the Ring this week was In the Shadow of Grizzly Smith. You know things are going to be dark when you get a disclaimer at the beginning. If you have heard Jake the Snake Roberts talk about his father and his childhood in Barry Blaustein's Beyond the Mat documentary on the Pick Your Poison DVD that WWE put out years ago, his interview on Joe Rogan's podcast, wherever it may have been, then you already knew the story. He's been pretty consistent with that over the years. And you probably got even more details than they shared here in this episode. But that gives you a sense of what this was about with the added perspective from Grizzly's other children, Sam Houston and Rockin' Robin, and another son who intentionally stayed away from the wrestling business. Smart man. But all you need to know about Grizzly Smith is not that he was a wrestler, not that he worked for WWE and WCW as an agent behind the scenes and Mid-South and all, all that stuff. None of that matters. All you need to know is that he was dating Jake's grandmother when he got Jake's mother pregnant. She was 13 years old and he raped her and got her pregnant. A 13-year-old girl. And it's not just Jake and his sister that have been public about the man's proclivity for young girls. Apparently, this was common knowledge among other wrestlers, other people in the business at the time who knew him. The man was a pedophile. And if you believe in a heaven and a hell, then you know exactly where you can find him. I like my grizzly well done. Extra crispy. This was the darkest episode yet. This one covered child molestation, kidnapping, murder. I mean, all the other episodes, we usually had one or the other. But this one kind of had this medley of all these things rolled up into one. This one ran the gamut. So I can't say that I enjoyed it because there was nothing to enjoy. But it was a powerful episode. They introduced us to Michael Smith, better known as Sam Houston. He was talking about the family history, Rockin' Robin, his sister, former WWE Women's Champion. She was interviewed for this as well. In fact, she showed off her old WWF Women's title belt that she has had in her possession since the division was abandoned in the late 80s. She talked about being the sister of Jake Roberts and Sam Houston. They have another brother named Richard. And he was interviewed for this as well. He says he didn't get involved in the wrestling business because of the travel. Again, I say he was the smartest of the bunch. Jake talked about how his father did not want him in wrestling. He had several promoters fire him to get him out of the business. His father would tell him that he was embarrassed and ashamed of him. And that was all the motivation that he needed. He had plans of going to college and doing other stuff. But once he realized that his father did not want him in the wrestling business and didn't really think much of him. He dropped all of his other goals and all of his other dreams, and he decided, I'm going to become a pro wrestler. I'm going to become a pro wrestler for one reason, not because I love it or because I think I'm the best at it, but because I want to stick it to my father. I want to do what he does for a living and do it better than him. That is what motivated him. He says his father never once said to him, I'm proud of you. And they had... An old interview with Grizzly Smith where he talked about how his father was very tough and, you know, he was a disciplinarian and he would whip you for lying and making mistakes or when he thought that you just needed to be whipped. Jake called his father a mean man, tortured all of his children psychologically, didn't let his kids in on the fact that wrestling was a work. And Jake would cry himself to sleep thinking that these, uh, these big mean men were going to kill his father. But when Grizzly retired from the ring, he was a big guy. He said he was seven feet tall. I don't know if that's in, uh, if that's one of those worked wrestling heights and he was actually six eight or six nine, whatever he was. He was a big man. And he retired from the ring. He got a job working behind the scenes as part of the office in various promotions. And they, you know, Jim Cornette was interviewed for this. I don't know why Jim Ross wasn't because they interviewed Jim Ross for a whole bunch of other ones. And Jim Ross would have been in Mid-South at that time when Grizzly was there. So I, I don't know why we didn't get comments from him. But Jim Cornette was uh, interviewed here. 
and talking about when he first got his start in the business and he would be, you know, his path didn't really cross much with uh, Grizzly, but he would hear the jokes because Grizzly was the butt of jokes behind the scenes about his liking of young girls and Cornette would hear these jokes and he just thought it was very odd, to say the least. They interviewed Baby Doll. They actually found Baby Doll, who was married at one time to Sam Houston, and Sam Houston said that Baby Doll is the mother of his children. He still loves her to this very day. She talked about how uh, they'd be in the car, right? Or, or she'd be in the car with Grizzly. They would pick up, like, these random young girls. They would drive by the girl's house. girl could be 15 years old. And her parents would be standing outside waving have fun, you know, waving as they drove off on some kind of road trip. I, who knows what the parents actually thought was going on. But it wasn't until after Grizzly passed away that you really started to get the entire story of what was going on. But she remembers vividly being in the in the car in these situations. And even then she thought, this is, this is pretty strange. But she had no reason to believe that there was anything you know, untoward going on. But, I mean, you look at that and you say, why would this guy be picking up random girls who were 13, 14, 15 years old? And the parents allow this. Jake talked a little bit about the difference between Jake the Snake and Aurelian Smith Jr., which is his real name. He says, he's not been Aurelian in about 40 years. He goes, Aurelian is still a kid who never grew up, so he had to leave him behind. But Jake told the story. He said, you know, his father had sex and impregnated his mother when she was 13 years old. And after that, they were forced to get married. And they were divorced by the time his mother was 17. He says his other siblings were passed around and talked about one sister, Jo Lynn, who spent a lot of time with their father, if you catch his drift. Jake said that his mother was blind to a lot of this, that he, she was great and he had nothing but praise and love for his mother. But uh, he claims that she didn't know about a lot of this stuff that was going on. Jake was living with his grandmother for a while, said that things were great. He had a great life with his grandmother until his grandmother passed away, because that's what happens when you have grandparents. They get fucking old and they die. That's what happens, unfortunately. And that's what happened to him and his grandmother. And when his grandmother passed away, he was sent back to live with his father and his new wife, who I believe the new wife was the mother of Rock and Robin and Sam Houston. So he, he thought it would be great. He was looking forward to it, but his stepmother was sexually abusive to him. He went to go tell his father one day. She stopped him, and she beat him with a coat hanger and a fly swatter. He did not know that his father was aware of it because he was doing the same thing to Jake's sisters. He thought he could go to his father and tell him everything, and it would be like a safe haven. He didn't know that his father was well aware of everything. He didn't know that was going on. Rockin' Robin. I thought Rockin' Robin, in listening to her speak, um, she's very down-to-earth, very grounded, considering all that she's been through. I thought she came across, honestly, the best out of everybody on this special. And she talked about how she... Now, this is the one part. She says, I'm not here to ruin my father's legacy, because he was great inside the ring. But to her... He was a monster. And I'm just sitting here listening to this and I'm going, you don't want to ruin his legacy. Fuck his legacy. What, what is this like worrying about his legacy and the rest? Oh, he was such a great wrestler. I don't want to ruin his legacy. The guy was a fuck. By your own admission, the guy was a fucking monster. Fuck his legacy. You don't have to worry about ruining anything. He ruined it himself. That's nobody's fault but his own. She said she was around eight or nine years old when he started manipulating her and grooming her. He would walk around completely ignoring her for days on end. And then one day out of the blue, he would call her into his room that he would be working in in the back into his office. And he would say, you know, you know that daddy loves you, right? He was grooming her. Because then she would be relieved. Oh, he doesn't hate me. This is great. Until he starts putting his hands on her for the first time. And she said, you have no way to really process that as it's happening. And it just, 
strips away everything that makes you a child. She said this sort of thing went on from the time that she was eight until she was 14 years old. And she told her mother, finally, and she grabbed everything they had and they left. And she told her father if he ever tried anything like that on her again, she would shoot him with his own gun because she knew where he kept his gun. I think that was Robin. It was either Robin or her mother who said that. I think it was Robin. But they made it very clear that you were not to put your hands on, on her again. And the producers, they brought up Jake's, uh, you know, confession that Robin's mother sexually and physically abused him. And Robin said, look, that's not the kind of woman that she knew her mother to be. She can't say that it didn't happen. She says if it did, she puts the blame on her father. He thinks that he would have forced her into doing that just for his own sick pleasure, because that wasn't the kind of woman that she knew her mom to be. Robin shared the story one day. She goes out with her sister, her half-sister, Jolyn. They go out one day, and she's asking Robin all these questions that are kind of strange. You know, do you feel safe? Are you comfortable? The way that she was asking these questions, she says she never came out and said it, but she's convinced that her sister was going through the same things with her father that happened to her. And then later on, they're at a roller skating rink one day, her and her, her brother uh, Richard. All of a sudden, they get a message to go home immediately. There was a note from their father that Jolyn had been kidnapped. And Richard was very close to her. You could, you could tell how emotional he gets just talking about it. You know, Richard being the one sibling who didn't get into wrestling. He was very close to, to Jolyn, couldn't understand why would somebody kidnap somebody so sweet. She was so happy. She had a young child at home. Who, who could do such a thing? So then they interview this guy, Carl Gage. He is the former chief of police in Tatum, Texas. He was the former chief of police at the time of this case. This guy, <laughs> this guy was, he was right out of central casting. He tells the story of the sister being kidnapped from her, her trailer home. She was removed from her home. And you know, Richard says, look, my sister was 5 foot 10, 200 pounds. There's no way that somebody took her by themselves. Because we would wrestle and she was a fighter and she wasn't really, you know, she wasn't that small. So he's convinced that there was more than one person that would have had to have taken her. The prime suspect is the ex-wife of JoLynn's then husband. She confessed to the kidnapping, but she told the police, well, you know, she escaped. I don't know what happened to her. So the police have search parties out, choppers, dogs, everything. They never found a body, which made murder charges impossible to file. Jake says it was the first time his father ever missed a pro wrestling match, you know, a booking that he had. The, the evidence seemed overwhelming, but without a body or somebody who actually saw this woman kill their sister, all this woman could be charged with was aggravated kidnapping, which carried a, a 30 plus year sentence. I think she served about seven, seven or so years of it. And Richard said that their father was in the courtroom and he carried a piece of piano wire that was attached to pieces of wood. He was going to strangle this woman. If he got close enough to her, he was going to strangle her and kill her. But the woman was surrounded by four police officers. He never got the chance. They didn't mention it here, but I, I think it was on Jake's DVD where he, he talked a little bit more about this in detail. And he said the police found like a ton of blood in this woman's car, like in her car trunk. An amount that would make it impossible to believe the sister would just be able to escape, as this woman says. But again, no, no body, no murder charge. And the sheriff has a theory. He believes that the body was burned because the, uh, I guess the woman worked at a place that had an incinerator. And so that would have been an easy way to dispose of a body. No evidence. Everything is gone. And Robin, you know, talks about the fact that there have been questions about, you know, did her father have anything to do with it? Richard says he wanted to go to the television show uh, Unsolved Mysteries many years later. I used to watch Unsolved Mysteries all the time with Robert Stack. Man, that creepy music. I can't get that creepy music out of my head. But he wanted to go to Unsolved Mysteries, and he said that his father said no. 
he had no interest in doing it. He also said that he never saw his dad cry over the loss of his daughter. Now look, these things don't mean that, you know, he had his daughter murdered, which is, I guess, one theory. But all evidence seems to indicate that this was the act of the ex-wife. But just, you know, whoever did it, just the fact that this even happened is just, it's crazy. It's insane. And it's just another one of these stories on top of everything else uh, that these, you know, family members and siblings have gone through that just makes this story so, uh, just so awful. But they talked a little bit about Robin's wrestling career and how she wanted to be trained like the guys. She wanted the women to have matches that were every bit as exciting as the men. And Grizzly got her a tryout with WWE. Vince McMahon enjoyed the match that she had with uh, Sensational Sherry and he complimented her on being able to throw a punch like like one of the boys, which to her was the ultimate compliment. There was a point where all three uh, children were working for WWE, Jake, Sam Houston, and Rockin' Robin. And Jim Cornette talked about Sam Houston, and and Richard did too, and they said, you know, he, he got very, very heavily into the drinking. Baby Doll says that when uh, Sam told her father that they were going to get married, I guess maybe when he was going to ask the father for, for his daughter's hand in marriage, she said that he drank 32 Crown and Cokes. And they asked her like, if she saw this as a problem. <laughs> You're like, 32 Crown and Cokes. You'd think maybe this guy would have had a problem, and she didn't see it as a problem. She figured that, well, you know, you know it'll be fine, and we love each other, and of course that wasn't enough. Lo love, love was not enough to overcome 32 Crown and Cokes. And she realized after a while that there was just nothing that, that she could do. You know, and Robin says that addiction just runs in their family and you just, it's just something that you had to learn to deal with. You know, she had a drinking problem as well. But she tells a story about her father shows up one day, just randomly shows up at her house and he is with a nine-year-old girl. And as soon as she looks down and sees the girl, like all the color in her face just drained because she knew. And Grizzly comes in and he wants Robin to make this girl a daiquiri. Do you have the stuff to make a daiquiri? And she says, no, I don't. So he goes off to sleep. She stayed up all night with this girl asking all kinds of questions. And she knew what questions to ask. And she got exactly the answers that she thought she would get. So the next morning, Grizzly goes to leave. And Robin just says to him, yeah, you can leave, but she's staying with me. She's not going with you. Jim Cornette said that Sam Houston held the record for the most DUIs in the state of Texas. Only thanks to his father did he not end up in jail long term. Sam said, well, you know, everything I was charged with, though, was a first offense, and usually it was just a fine and community service. He, he doesn't think his father had anything to do with getting him out of these uh, sticky situations. Unfortunately for him, the law did catch up with him eventually, and this time his father wasn't able to save him, and he was facing 30 years in prison. He tried to hang himself. The knot broke when he jumped. He says, look, I know how to tie a knot. Somehow this knot broke. Went back to Jake. All of his fuck-ups. Cornette called him the Keith Richards of pro wrestling. Jake says for 20 years, the only thing that mattered in his life more than wrestling, more than his family, his kids, everything. For 20 years, the most important thing was cocaine. And he says, when you do drugs, your idea of a good time, it's warped. Things get a little freaky. At first you got one girl, then it's two girls, then it's three girls, then you throw in a rabbit and a dog. <laughs> it's like, wow. Interesting. I don't know that I need to know about the story behind the rabbit and the dog. That's a different Dark Side of the Ring episode. They did show highlights or lowlights from the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view, which was one of Jake's low points. And he was all fucked up, had no business being there, had no business being in the ring. Rockin' Robin ended her career, basically, when WWE ended the women's division. She became an alcoholic, and she... She realized, she said, you know, my father ruined my childhood. I'm be damned if I'm going to let him ruin the rest of my life. And she cleaned herself up. They talked about how Grizzly ended up with Alzheimer's disease. 
He died in June of 2010 from complications from the disease. His son, Richard, who... Richard was given up for adoption. In the end, he was the only caretaker that his father had. Never bothered to ask his father why he gave him up for adoption. But he got very emotional talking about his father's final days. And, you know, Sam, when he got the news that his father died, he was in prison. He says that's about the worst place that you can be when you get news like that. But they had the footage from Beyond the Mat. I was wondering if they would show this. That that one scene, that just one creepy scene in Beyond the Mat where... Jake is over at his father's house and they're interviewing Grizzly and Grizzly's talking about how Jake was, you know, he was born out of love and I still love him. He was born out of love. That's a warped way of looking at it. And then they kind of pan over to Jake. Jake is just, he's got sunglasses on and he's just, he's, you know, I mean, God only knows what's going through his head at that moment. That's the scene where they show, you know, Grizzly chopping wood and all that stuff. Just a creepy ass scene. Sam Houston says that um, he's talked to his sister Robin about her stories of abuse. He can't imagine what she went through. He thinks that his mother and sister never told him about any of this because to him, his father was always Superman. He could do no wrong. You know, Baby Doll talked about how Sam idolized his father. He probably would have forgiven him instead of trying to help his sister. I mean, it's like insanity. <laughs> you hear this and it's just insane but she knows that you know grizzly can make sam believe that it was robin or jake's fault so when i say that it's insane you know it's insane for for you and me to to hear stories like this and my god how could somebody think that but then you think okay there's a lot of mental manipulation going on here so you can kind of understand how some of these siblings could maybe take the father's side, or maybe the father treated them better than they treated their brother or sister. But still, you know, how do you just sort of ignore that kind of behavior? Richard says that uh, Grizzly never apologized for giving him up for adoption, but he can't complain because he feels like he's the lucky one out of the bunch. <laughs> I would say probably, yeah. Jake says it would be nice now to have a sister. I, I guess all the siblings, they really are not close. But Jake says it would be nice to have a sister. And Sam says, yeah, I would I would love to be closer to all of them. And, and Richard says, maybe, maybe I'm the one who needs to try to make that happen. Maybe we could try to get together and figure out a way to make that happen. Robin hopes that this might somehow bring all of them closer together. But she wanted people, her message at the end here was, she wanted people to know that you can be successful. If you are in the same situation, you can overcome it. And she pleads, anyone out there watching this episode, if this is happening to you, please tell someone. Get help. Jake says the same thing. It doesn't matter. If you're a kid, if you're going through the same thing, his only advice, run. Run to the police. Run to your teacher, to your pastor, whoever it is. But run. Get out of that situation. Get help. Jake says he's not as angry now as he used to be. He used to carry all that anger around with him. Now he, he claims he's been sober for 10 years. They have video of him at the one of the AEW shows. He's got a big smile on his face. So it ends actually on a positive note. I mean, as, as much as you can end an episode like this on a positive note, it does end on, on a happier note. And Jake really is a success story because Jake Roberts should not be here right now. If you were one of these people who morbidly, you know, had wrestlers in death pools and stuff and were taking bets on who would be the next one to, to kick the bucket, there are some names who would have been on that list. Jake Roberts would have probably been at the head of everyone's list. And this is going back years. And he just celebrated his 66th birthday the other day. And he's doing, clearly doing much better. You just look at the guy. He's doing much better than he was you know, even even a decade ago, where whenever it was that DDP went over to his house, you know, if you saw the resurrection of Jake the Snake movie that DDP did, you know, and Jake was well north of 300 pounds and sitting at home and drinking and doing shit that he shouldn't have been doing. And, you know, the fact that he is as healthy as he is and still around is a miracle in itself. And I think it would be cool. If, if actually all the, the brothers and sisters could get together and and sort of 
I don't know, form friendships that uh, that they haven't had over all of these years. But this was a very dark episode. This put the dark in Dark Side of the Ring. There are no excuses to be made for Grizzly Smith. I go back to what I said at the beginning. I don't care what kind of wrestler he was. I don't care what kind of mind he had for the business. How respected he may have been behind the scenes. The guy was a fucking monster. He does not deserve to be respected. There is nothing to respect about someone who abuses children in that way. The next episode coming up this week is the final episode of this half of the of the season. It's on Dynamite Kids, so <laughs> the uh, the dark side continues, and then they'll come back. I guess end of summer, beginning of fall, with the second half of the season. So uh, after the Dynamite Kid episode, I'll be back with that one final review next week. We'll talk about that. But uh, let me know what you thought of the episode. If you did see it, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And I will be back uh, with Dark Side Dynamite Kid next week. Until then, take care, guys.